Today I'm going to present our study on sequential immunization with uh, an integrased effective antiviral vector. A growing number of vector and DNA-based vaccine regimens have been tested as candidate vaccine to end the HIV epidemic. However, some of these vaccine platforms are often purely immunogenic when administered alone. They can induce or be associated with anti-vector immunity and tend to elicit short-lived immune responses. Integrated effective lentiviral vectors are non-replicating and non-integrating lentiviral-based vectors, and previous studies in mice and on human primate using IDLV have shown to induce long-lasting and protective immune responses. IDLV are currently in broad development for use as vaccine recombinant and as anti-cancer therapy, and preliminary results from a human vaccine trial for solid cancer demonstrated safety and immunogenicity with some early evidence of anti-tumor activity. Uh, another interesting feature that makes IDLV an attractive vaccine platform is the possibility of using this vector for repeated immunization by using a VSVG serotype exchange strategy to reduce anti-vector immunity. Therefore, IDLV might represent a safe and efficacious vaccine platform for the development of a prophylactic vaccine against HIV. Uh, the aim of the study that I'm presenting today is to test whether sequential immunization with IDLV expressing a succession of related HIV envelope isolated from an HIV positive subject who developed BNAB, namely the CH505 subject, will result in innate affinity maturation, persistent functional and broad immune responses, and elicitation of broader responses compared to protein and DNA immunization. Here I'm showing the uh, NHP122 immunization schedule. Uh, these studies employed a total of 32 animals divided in four groups, as shown here. The first group of animals received IDLV alone, the second group received IDLV plus protein, and the control group receiving IDLV expressing GFP. We finally have a fourth group of, animal, of four animals receiving IDLV alone that are mainly be used for safety studies. Uh, we have done three of the five immunizations so far. Uh, for group B1 and B3, six months apart from each other, and two immunization for group A animals. Uh, here I'm showing the different VSV uh, serotype that we've used for the first three immunization, and the last two serotype that we will use in the subsequent immunization. And the, in the box up here, I'm also showing the dose of the vector, as well as the protein at the adjuvant for the co-immunization group. The presence of anti-HIV envelope IgG was assessed over time by ELISA. Serum binding antibodies were further characterized for specificity and neutralization, and the magnitude and durability of antibody responses that were induced by IDLV plus minus protein, protein alone, and DNA plus minus protein vaccine regimen delivering the same HIV envelope were compared after two of the five immunizations. Uh, we first compared the antibody responses that were induced by IDLV alone and IDLV plus protein. Uh, surprisingly, at the peak post prime, we didn't see any difference in uh, the magnitude of, uh, of antibody response between IDLV alone in blue and IDLV plus protein in red. The antibody titer slowly declined over time, and we had a less than 1.5-fold decline at six months post-immunization. After the second immunization with the WIC53 envelope, we had a higher than six-fold increase in antibody titers for the IDLV alone group, and higher than 10-fold increase in antibody titers for the IDLV plus protein group. Uh, since the CH505 envelope induced CD4 binding site BNABs in the CH505 subject uh, from which they were isolated, we then asked whether we induced CD4 binding site antibodies in the IDLV vaccinated animals. We therefore performed a competition assay using known CD4 BNABs and soluble CD4. Uh, at the peak post prime, we uh, only saw very limited blocking in a few of the animals against uh, the uh, BNABs shown here, CH106 and CH31 uh, and soluble CD4. But after the second immunization done at six months post prime, we detected high blocking activity in most of the animals um, with higher blocking activity in the uh, group that received IDLV plus protein. Uh, we detected uh, blocking activity both against the autologous and heterologous M for the two being up tested. Uh, we next perform a linear epitope mapping to determine the epitope specificity of the induced antibodies. And we found that a dominant and sustained GP120 specific cross clit response directed mainly at C1, C2, and V3 developed in both groups at six weeks post prime. 
The addition of the GP140 protein in the ADLV plus protein group affected the proportion of binding to different epitopes, but did not affect the proportion of binding to different clades. After the second immunization, additional specificity came up, including a V2, an antibody targeting the loop D, which is the region of the HIV envelope that was targeted by the neutralizing antibody lineage in the CH505 subject. We next test uh, serum neutralization against the CH505 lineage viruses shown here uh, in TZMBL cells. At six weeks post prime, we only detected very weak neutralization against the tier 1A virus shown here in one of the animals. And after the second immunization done at six months post prime, we detected high titer of neutralizing antibodies against the same tier 1A virus. Uh, and uh, we detected slightly higher uh, neutralizing antibody titers in the group that received IDLV plus protein, but the difference between the two groups was not significant. We then compared the responses observed in our protocol to the ones uh, induced in other studies using the same CH5 file sequential approach. Uh, for the comparison, we picked two other studies conducted through Chavi ID and HP79, in which the animals were immunized with GP120 protein, and NHP114, in which the animal received either DNA alone or DNA plus protein. Here I'm showing the immunization schedule for the three different studies. As you can see, they are quite different from each other, as by the time we performed the second immunization, uh, in the IDLV immunized animals, the animal in the other two studies had already received four or five immunization. But the reason why we picked this study is because of the longer uh, interval between two subsequent immunizations, six months for NHP79 and three months for NHP114. Here I'm showing the, the binding antibody responses induced by the different vaccine regimen. On the left side, in blue and red, IDLV alone and IDLV plus protein group, respectively. In green, protein alone, and in purple and orange, DNA and DNA plus protein immunized animals. The numbers on top of the dots indicate the number of immunization the animal received at the indicated time point. While similar antibody titers um, were induced by IDLV alone and protein alone, significantly higher antibody titers were induced in the IDLV plus protein co-immunization group. When we compare the um, antibody titers that were induced by the IDLV vaccine regimen to the DNA and DNA plus protein vaccine regimen, we also detect higher antibody titers in the IDLV immunized animals. We assessed the persistence of the antibody response over time, and we found that between three and six months post immunization, we didn't uh, see any decline in antibody titers in uh, both IDLV vaccinated animals. Uh, the antibody response continued to decline in the protein alone vaccinated animals, and they were basically back to ba baseline level in the DNA low vaccinated animals. All these vaccine regimen induced tier one neutralizing antibody against the CH505 W4.3 virus, but both IDLV vaccine regimen induced significantly higher antibody titers than protein alone and DNA plus minus protein. In summary, IDLV alone elicited similar antibody response as IDLV plus protein at the prime. After the boost, antibody titers were higher in the IDLV plus protein co-immunization group. Both groups developed CD4 banning site antibodies after the boost with higher blocking activity in the IDLV plus protein group. The addition of the GP140 protein in group B2 had minimal effect on the proportion of binding to different clade, but did affect the proportion of binding to different epitopes. IDLV induced higher magnitude and durability of antibody response compared to DNA alone and DNA plus protein vaccine regimen. And despite similar antibody titers between IDLV and protein alone, IDLV induced higher titers of tier one neutralizing antibodies and higher durability. So far, we haven't detected any tier two autologous or heterologous neutralizing antibodies. Compared to other vaccination strategies, IDLV is a novel platform capable of inducing antibody responses of high magnitude and durability. Therefore, this vaccine platform warrants further exploration as a delivery system to enhance the strength and persistence of vaccine responses. I would like to thank all the collaborators that are working on this project and the funding agencies. And thank you. <laughs>